All right, well, here's some food for thought. Two out of three bites of food we eat are related to bee pollination, and over 90 different crops rely on bee pollination to reproduce. Maybe you're sitting down for dinner right now and kind of thinking about that. But what is the effect of extreme weather on bee populations and the future of our food supply? Brittany Rainey goes looking for answers with a North Texas beekeeper in this week's Climate Connection. You know, glimpsing the inside and inner workings of a beehive is like, it's like a window into a whole world that you've never experienced before. 20 years and 20,000 hives, Blake Shook has learned a thing or two. The, the harmony that the bees work and the, uh, the brilliant methods they use to keep their hives safe and cool and warm and, I mean, it's just, it's just a whole world and, and I just fell in love with that world. Observing and caring for honeybees through the lens of his bee suit. And what do the drones do again? The only thing they do is mate with the queen. They mate with the queen once and then the drone actually dies. He can tell you all about the queen bee, who expands the hive, laying up to 2,000 eggs a day. But the queen actually doesn't call the shots. The worker bees do. They very much act as um, kind of a democracy, if you will, of, of they're all working together, looking at what needs to be done, and then agreeing to act on it. A healthy hive can grow from a couple thousand bees in early spring to 80,000 in a couple of weeks when resources are plentiful. But recent weather extremes are having a major impact on the hive, especially when hot, dry summers lead to drought conditions. But the huge factor is what it's doing to the flowers, because bees rely on, uh, you know, nectar and pollen from flowers to sustain their hives. And when it gets too dry, they stop producing pollen and nectar, which can lead to starvation, unless the beekeeper steps in with supplemental food. You know, if we go back 30 years, the average annual loss rate for bees was, you know, 10 to 15 percent per year. Now it's about 45 percent. Weather isn't the only contributing factor that, to that, but it's one of, the, one of the major contributing factors. But it's not just the heat impacting beehives, so does prolonged freezing temperatures and Arctic blasts. You know, when we had the huge freeze in February a couple years ago, you know, we saw a 20 to 30 percent uh, loss just from that freeze. To ensure the bees thrive instead of just survive, beekeepers are having to get creative. During a hot, dry Texas summer, there's not a lot of honey made because the flowers are not blooming. So now commercial beekeepers are moving their hives north to moderate temperatures where flowers are in bloom, and they're even moving them into climate-controlled spaces. So we actually are controlling the environment now, uh, and that's saved thousands and thousands of our beehives every year uh, by taking weather out of the equation. So what is the prognosis for, you know, five years with the bees and the resources that will be available to them? Yeah, so as we look to the future, it's not all bleak. I mean, the, the beekeeping industry is incredibly adaptive. Bees are incredibly adaptive. And I don't think we're going to see a disappearance of bees. Um, but we are certainly seeing conditions worsen for bees. With a watchful eye on the weather, Blake will continue to help bees adapt to our changing world. Bees take nothing from the environment. There is no negative impact to the environment whatsoever from bees. And yet, because of them, we have food. Brittany Rainey, CBS News, Texas. I don't think I've ever wanted to cry at the end of a show. <laughs> the poor little bee. The poor little bee. You know, it's funny, and every disaster movie you kind of see sometimes about climate change, like if we lose the bees and yeah. it's all done. Yeah. So yeah. I know it's a little bit of a joke about that, but it's a real story that we are talking about the climate and how they're happy to move north. And it was interesting to learn that they have bees inside now in climate yeah. control areas. So when they show, when Brittany showed the shot of that, right, and that, that indoor facility, mm -hmm. here, my first thought as a dude, I'm thinking, okay, what if there's a prison? break with the bees Ooh. and they all get out indoor yeah. Yeah. who's going in yeah that's yeah scary. that's scary thing, it was you know? also really interesting to see for, for other people to learn too that it's not just honey that's affected by yep. you yeah. know if something happens to the bees right. it, it Affects our whole it, food, our food, food source, yeah. yeah. And I didn't even know that two out of three bites, you know, it's pollinate the bee pollination is there. So, you know, they're helping us eat. And if you want to help also feed the bees by planting maybe pollinator friendly plants like crepe myrtle, sage, and Indian blanket, you could do that. And to make sure you use pollinator friendly pesticides. And also, if you have any questions or have something you'd like us to look into, email the first alert meteorologist at climate connection at ktvt.com. KTVT Tell us climate stories every week.